the life uh, that we have led uh, will become like a dream that has gone by. Uh, every life uh, we experience uh, is one dream after another, one dream after another. And when it is finished, uh, anything connected with that life uh, actually is not important at all. It's just a dream gone by, not important at all. Just like when we uh, dream at night, uh, when we have a nightmare, uh, in the nightmare itself, uh, we are so frightened, we are so excited, uh, uh, and, we, and we, we, we strive with all our energy uh, to either to, to fight off the evil or to escape from being killed and all that. Uh. And then when we wake up, uh, then we, we, we think about it, uh, Ayo, just now I was so excited, just now I was so worried. Uh, actually, it's nothing to worry about, right? Mm. So in the same way, uh, life, uh, and we are alive, la. we think that everything in life is so important. But when we die, yeah, all the things are not important. What is important is where we are going for rebirth. And that is important. Uh, so if we realize this uh, earlier, uh, we would have started our preparations uh, for the next phase of our life. La. <laughs> uh, our people. Uh, you don't realize eh, that uh, to prepare for your rebirth eh, takes many years, you know, eh, many years. So you can't, eh, like last minute, eh, they're going to die in a few days' time. Eh, you think what to do. Eh, eh, too late already. Eh. You need at least 10 years eh, to prepare eh, to, 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 to get a reasonable good rebirth. Eh. So... It's a thing to remember uh, when we are dying. Uh, all that has happened in life uh, will grow cold, uh, not important at all. What do you think, monks? Can a monk whose asavas are destroyed create a meritorious volition or a demeritorious volition or an Im imperturbable volition? No, Venerable Sir. When there are utterly no uh, volitions, with the cessation of volitions, would consciousness would consciousness be discerned, be seen? No, Venerable Sir. When there is utterly no consciousness with the cessation of consciousness, would mentality, materiality be discerned, be seen? No, Venerable Sir. When there is utterly no mentality, materiality, then there is no six sense basis, no contact, no feeling, no craving, no clinging, no being, no birth, and with the cessation of birth, uh, there will be no aging and death. La. So the Buddha said, good monks, it is exactly so and not otherwise. Place faith in me about this monks. Resolve on this. Be free from perplexity and doubt about this. Just this is the end of suffering. Uh, so the Buddha said, uh, have faith in him. What he says is true. Uh, he is not lying to us. So in this sutta, the Buddha says, uh, if we uh, want to understand uh, how to end suffering, uh, we have to consider, uh, contemplate uh, these links one by one. Uh, then actually suffering comes about because we are in this world. But if we are not born into this world, then there is no suffering. Uh, and how not to be born in this world uh, is to uh, the source of birth. Uh, to stop the source of birth, eh, which is uh, being. And then to understand that being comes from clinging or attachment, attachment comes from craving, eh, etc. Eh. Then uh, that is understanding eh, how suffering originates and how suffering can end. Eh. Then uh, if you are walking the path uh, to be liberated, uh, then you don't want to generate any volition because uh, you don't want to be attached to anything in the world, uh, so you don't want anything at all. Uh, then, uh, that's it. Mm. At 12.52 uh, at Savati, monks, when one dwells contemplating gratification in things that can be clung to, craving increases. I stop here for a moment. Uh, here the Buddha says, uh, if you dwell uh, contemplating gr gratification, that means satisfaction. Uh, satisfaction 
with things uh, that you cling to, uh, then uh, craving increases. Uh. For example, if you have a big house, you have a, uh, a big car, you have a lot of property and wealth, uh, then when you contemplate all your wealth, uh, then you are very satisfied. Uh, uh, but your craving will increase. Uh, yeah, and craving, craving. With craving as condition, clinging comes to be. With clinging as condition, being. With being as condition, birth. With birth as condition, aging and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, displeasure and despair come to be. Such is the origin of this whole mass of suffering. Suppose, monks, a great bonfire was burning, consuming 10, 20, 30 or 40 loads of wood, and a man would cast dry grass, dry cow dung and dry wood into it from time to time. Thus sustained by that material, fueled by it, that great bonfire would burn for a very long time. So too, when one lives contemplating gratification in things that can be clung to, craving increases. And from craving, you have all the other things, uh, clinging, etc. Such is the origin of this whole mass of suffering. So here the Buddha is saying, uh, just like a big fire, uh, if you keep throwing three things into it, uh, dry grass, dry cow dung, and dry wood, uh, the fire will continue to burn. It will not stop. Uh, so in the same way, our fire uh, is, uh, is fueled uh, by three things. Uh, just like these three things. Uh, the three things within us uh, is the greed, hatred, and delusion. So this greed, hatred, and delusion uh, will keep the fire burning, uh, the fire of uh, this uh, round of rebirths. Uh, uh, so samsara. Uh, so um, that's because uh, we are satisfied uh, with life mm -hmm. and our craving, uh, instead of decreasing, uh, our craving increases. Uh, Anything in the world uh, that we enjoy, uh, uh, then our craving uh, will increase. Uh, and then our clinging also will increase. Uh, uh. And then the Buddha said, Monks, when one dwells contemplating danger in things that can be clung to, craving ceases. With the cessation of craving comes cessation of clinging. The cessation of clinging, cessation of being, cessation of birth, aging and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, displeasure and despair cease. Such is the cessation of this whole mass of suffering. Suppose monks, a great bonfire was burning, consuming 10, 20, 30 or 40 loads of wood, and a man would not, and a man would not cast dry grass, dry cow dung or dry wood into it from time to time. Thus, when the former supply of fuel is exhausted, that great bonfire not being fed with any more fuel, lacking sustenance, would be extinguished. So too, when one lives contemplating danger in things that can be clung to, craving ceases, and when craving ceases, clinging ceases, etc. Such is the cessation of this whole mass of suffering, uh, at the end of the sutta. So here, uh, the second part uh, is that when a person realizes uh, danger uh, in the things that he clings to, uh, then craving ceases. And what is that danger? The danger is that it is impermanent and because it is impermanent, it will give you suffering. I remember last year I was talking to one, one of our Buddhist supporters, devotees in Kuala Lumpur. He had a son who went overseas to study. And I think he went swimming and he drowned and died. And because this man uh, only had one son, uh, I think one daughter, one son and two daughters or something like that. Uh. So when the son died, uh, he and his wife uh, felt so much pain, uh, so much suffering. And then he told me uh, something which uh, struck me. Uh. Mm. He told me uh, after that experience, uh, he dare not love the daughter so much. Uh. <laughs> and the more you love her, uh, when it goes away and the pain uh, is unbearable. Uh, so because of that he said, dare not love the doctor so much now. 
It shows he's a, he's a smart fellow. <laughs> not, not many people uh, will realize this. Uh, oh. <laughs> so here the Buddha is saying that oh, when one contemplates the danger uh, of, of that, that, uh, uh, that uh, clinging, uh, that craving, uh, that means that suffering will follow. Uh, uh, then he lets, lets, lets go of that uh, craving. Uh. So actually, you see, uh, the best teacher in the world uh, is suffering. Uh. <laughs> if we don't suffer, uh, we don't realize. Uh. So we have to suffer. Uh. Just like a, a small kid, uh, a small kid, uh, he tells you not to play with fire, uh, he won't listen to you, right? He will continue to play uh, until he gets his fingers burned. Uh, then you don't have to tell him, uh, he will automatically stop playing with fire. Uh, so the world is like that. Uh, uh, when we are young, uh, we want to experience all the pleasures in life. Uh, uh, we want to be a macho, we want to be a great hero, uh, go into this and go into that. Uh, and then when we suffer, uh, then we realize. Uh, uh, but there are some people, and their karma is good enough, uh, they can get out of it. Uh, but uh, there are some people, their karma is not so good. Uh, when they suffer, uh, they don't get out of it. Uh. When I was young, I had a neighbor, uh, young, young guy, uh, I mean young man. So he joined a bad company, uh, ended up became, becoming a drug addict. Once you become a drug addict, uh, it, it's almost impossible to get out of it. So I think he could be like one of those uh, just d die on the five foot path uh, on the roadside. <laughs> so it's very pitiful. So if he get caught by this uh, uh, this state, uh, then he can't get out of it. In Dana Sanghita, quite a lot of suttas as well. I try to go to one more sutta. 12.60. On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling among the Kurus, where there was a town of the Kurus named Kamma Sadhamma. Then the Venerable Ananda approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him, sat down to one side and said to him, It is wonderful, Venerable Sir, it is amazing, Venerable Sir. This dependent origination is so deep and so deep in implications, yet to me it seems as clear as clear can be. I'll stop here for a moment. So Venerable Ananda is, is, is um, disclosing to the Buddha that uh, actually dependent origination is very deep but to him uh, it seems uh, so clear uh, that he understands it so clearly and then the Buddha said not so Ananda not so Ananda this dependent origination is deep and deep in implications it is because of not understanding and not penetrating this Dhamma Ananda that this generation has become like a tangled skein like a knotted ball of thread, like matted reeds and rushes, and does not pass beyond the plane of misery, the bad destinations, the netherworld, samsara. Here the Buddha is saying, uh, this generation, people, uh, have become like a tangled skin, is a, a loosely coiled bundle of yarn or thread, uh, all tangled up, the thread is all tangled up and knotted. Uh, yeah. So why is it uh, that Ananda is supposed to be a Sotapanna and, and, uh, and he says he can see a dependent origination clearly yeah, but the Buddha says no. Uh, actually we find in the Vinaya books uh, after the Buddha was enlightened uh, then uh, even after enlightenment uh, he wanted to understand dependent origination and he stated uh, that he spent the whole night uh, from 6 p.m. until 6 a.m. Uh, for 12 hours uh, he was contemplating dependent origination how suffering arises, how suffering ceases and how suffering arises and ceases uh, 12 hours uh. then only he fully understood 